some really nice stuff we got here. Aloha everyone, I'm Paulina from Off Grid Hawaii and Michael right now is behind the camera. And in today's video, we wanna show you guys how we work together with our chickens to make compost in a really easy way. So firstly, we do have a lot of new subscribers, which <coughs> came, Ronaldo. So firstly, we just wanna say thank you and welcome to our new subscribers that we got from our previous video about the mulch urinal. <coughs> so clearly you are interested in creating compost in an easy way then this video is definitely for you. All right, when we say easy, we mean like super easy. For us, it's so easy. We like don't even realize we're making compost. <coughs> I guess the hardest part about it is dealing with Ronaldo. <coughs> All right, so this method of making compost is really easy. However, it does require some work in the beginning in order to get it started. So what we have behind me right here is our chicken house. And this is the basic structure that contains the whole compost production activity. Now, in order for this to work well, you need four components. The first one is a roof. So it needs to have a roof in order to protect from the rain. And it also allows you to be more in control of the moisture content of the compost that you're creating. The second thing is it needs to have walls that allow for sunlight to penetrate into it. So you don't want it to be completely closed off with solid walls. And what we have is chicken wire and this allows um, the air to come through and the light to keep the compost nice and clean. If you have a structure that's like any bigger than what we have, we would also recommend doing a sun panel at the top, so a clear clear roofing to allow some sunlight to come in from the top as well. So the third component is that it needs to allow for two feet of mulch to sit at the base of it. So you can either dig out the ground two feet and fill it with mulch, or you can build it up with cinder blocks and then fill it up with mulch. Um, you don't want to the walls of the base to be wood because that would lead to it rotting easily. So either one of those methods is good or a combination of that. So cinder blocks and digging it down. All right, and the fourth component is that your structure needs to have a door. Now we have a really wide opening. Um, it allows for a tractor to be able to get in there and dump a pile of mulch. And it also just makes it easier to kind of get in there and dig out the compost and go in and pick eggs and grab chickens and do all that stuff. So you definitely want a door that allows you good access to your compost. So once you have your chicken house or run all built, you're gonna need to fill it with mulch. This is a deep mulch system, which means the chickens are just gonna scratch and poop in here all day long and through that process they're going to be turning so to say the compost for you mixing things around pooping on it constantly just doing the turning for you so that's what makes this so easy and passive it honestly feels like we don't do anything to make this compost all we do is once a day or a couple times a day we'll throw fruit scraps in here they eat what they want they just work in the rest a lot of times people ask like, what, what should I do with this scrap or something? And we'll just say, throw it in the chicken house. And they go, they eat this? And we're like, no, it's just like also our compost pile. So in this sense, like it's pretty close to our house, about 10, 20 feet away is our house. So whenever we have stuff that can go in here, any compost stuff, it comes right in here. And like I said, the chickens do the work for us. A couple things you want to be aware of with this system is that the compost and mulch, all this stuff has to have a bit of moisture. So with the roof, it's going to keep out all the rain. So you're going to have to be adding the moisture by hand once in a while. So what I'll do usually is I'll, I'll dig around a little bit, check the moisture. I don't go too crazy. You know, if it looks wet and um, it looks like things are breaking down, then I don't add water. But if it looks really dry, then I'll add maybe like eight to 10 gallons of water around the middle area 
Um, I don't want to get the whole thing wet because the chickens do enjoy some of the dry dust and stuff to take like dust baths. So I mainly just focus on like middle like four feet and that's kind of where I'm making the compost and taking the compost out from. The last thing you can do, is, which is kind of fun, I like to do, is you can grab a thermometer, compost thermometer. This one is two feet long. I got it on Amazon. It's pretty good. If you're interested, link in the description. So right on here, it'll tell you that when it's 90 degrees to 130, that it's active. And that's kind of all I'm looking for. I don't think it's ever going to go into the hot zone, which would kill... Um, pathogens and weed seeds we're not really too concerned with that and it's actually nice to have our seeds uh, pop up in the garden sometimes sometimes it's something good and we end up keeping it and they grow really well and I think that has to do with just like the inoculation of the compost on the seeds from the beginning uh, you know when they're germinating so for a quick demo of how I take the temperature all I do is stick it in about a foot you don't want to go all the way to the bottom because that's the finished compost and it's going to be cooled down by then. So just go a little bit, maybe like a foot in. So we're right at about 110 degrees, which is really nice. That just goes to show that all the nitrogen and from the chickens and our food scraps and the mulch, it's all working. It's all breaking down. The microbes are in there, really active. It's going to break down pretty quick because of that. If this pile wasn't two feet deep, it may not heat up that much. So that's why it's really important to do at least two feet. You could do maybe even more if you want. So now we're going to talk about how we get it out of this uh, system here so that we can use it in the yard. To do that, I'm just going to kind of explain how the whole thing works. Whereas the top layer is much coarser materials, the mulch, the food scraps, the poop. And then, so that's the top layer, maybe the first six inches. And then you go down from there, like about the next foot, that's gonna be the actively breaking down. It's when the chickens really don't go that deep anymore. It kind of sits static and the microbes are in there working, breaking it all down. And then under that is gonna be all the finished compost. So when we're coming to get this stuff, that's what we're looking for. So first I'm gonna push the top layer all the way to one side and then the middle layer all the way to the other side and then we're going to be able to grab some compost and then when we're done taking the compost we're going to bring the middle layer back and then the top layer so that it's like it it doesn't get all mixed up make sense yes So I've scraped off the top and put it to the left side now. I'm starting to notice it's a lot more broken down here. We seem to be in the middle range here now. Could it even check and yeah, so it's starting to feel warm here. So this is the middle layer. Yeah. Is this what you're going to use? No. no. This is the active layer, so it's still breaking down. It's not finished compost. Feel a little warm there. So here we are. We made it to the bottom layer, which is our finished compost looking really beautiful you can tell you have like really broken down finished compost when it's almost like mud and it sticks together this is some really nice stuff here so I basically use this in two different ways as a top dress 
where I wouldn't be screening it, but if I'm going to be working it into soil, I do take a half inch hardware cloth and sift through it so that uh, I get some of the big chunks out. So this is why you want to be sifting it out. There still is a lot of like of the bigger wood chips that were in there from the mulch. You don't necessarily want to be mixing this into a soil, but as a top dress, it's perfectly fine. Like if, if you're just going to be putting it around your fruit trees or on your garden, this stuff like this is just fine. You get lots of audience members. <laughs> <laughs> so I just finished sifting about half a wheelbarrow. Um, I wouldn't suggest taking too much out of the system at once. It's nice for it to just be able to recover a lot quicker rather than emptying the whole thing and starting from scratch. So it depends really on how big your system is. But for us, maybe a half a wheelbarrow per month. You know, maybe if we need more for something, we'll take a little bit more, but give it a little more rest. So like wait two months or three months in between the next one. Um, there has been times where I've emptied this whole thing because I was starting the citrus orchard in the back and we started kind of from scratch and it's pretty much been sitting since then. So maybe like s almost a year, six to eight months, a year around there. Um, so that's why this is really so broken down because this has almost been in there for about a year. So after you take out what you need, you're going to be kind of covering it back up. So we have the second layer that we moved to the right. I'm going to put that down first and then the top layer is still on the left and that's going to go right on top of that. So it's kind of like you're putting it back how it was. Yep. So we're kind of just putting it back how it was. Yeah. All right, that's it for this video. As you can see, it's super easy. All you have to do is some work, but most of the work is done by the chickens. So definitely we encourage you to try this out if you've been looking to get chickens and trying to create compost. <laughs> And we do want to thank the person who taught us about this method. His name is Shad from Atislan Organics. And he also has a video about how he creates compost with chickens. Check it out in the link below. And if you're not into chickens, but you still want to make a good compost or fertilizer, then definitely check out our last video. The most easy way to use your own bodily fluids to, <laughs> to make a uh, really rich fertilizer and that's right here bye see you in the next one <laughs>